This is KGW News at Noon. An enormous fire engulfs homes in the middle of the night. And today we get a new perspective on the damage. Our drone Fly 8 shows the charred remains of this devastating fire. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brenda Braxton. You know, miraculously, no one was hurt, but now investigators are working to figure out how this fire started. KGW's Christine Pitawanich is live in Wilsonville. Christine, this could have been so much worse. Brenda, you know, it really could have been, especially because that fire broke out when so many people were still sleeping. But you can see just how close these homes are to one another, making it really easy for flames to jump. But today we're getting a bird's eye view of the damage and it is staggering. From KGW's Fly 8 drone, this looks like a war zone in Wilsonville. The destruction caused by a huge fire that broke out around 1 a.m. Sunday at a construction site right next to the Villabois community with tightly packed condos where people lay sleeping. James Brown's husband, Michael Bell, woke up and saw the flames. So we grabbed the dogs, grabbed our cars, and just hightailed it out. The whole building across the street from us was um, engulfed. So it was just insane. But then Bell, in his bathrobe, ran door to door, waking up his neighbors, trying to get them to safety. Everybody was really lucky that he actually went around and knocked on, on, the, on the doors and all that. His neighbors followed suit, pounding on doors, honking car horns. Brown is just grateful his husband saw the flames. If it wasn't for him, I probably would be, be, I would be dead. So, and our dogs probably wouldn't have made it either because we were all asleep. In total, 20 homes are unlivable. 14 cars and trucks burned up. And these street lamps, well, you can see the melted mess. But miraculously, among all this destruction, no lives were lost. Back out here live, investigators still trying to figure out what caused this fire. So if you know anything, call the Clackamas County Sheriff's Office. Meantime, a GoFundMe account has been set up for people whose homes were damaged or destroyed by this fire. You can find a link to that GoFundMe on our website, KGW.com. Brenda? They will need all the help they can get. Christine, thank you. It was a big old celebration in Eugene. Oregon Ducks fans welcomed home the women's basketball team after a huge win. It's Oregon's first trip to the Final Four in school history. So the team is getting a day off today. Tonight, Oregon finds out if it's going to face Iowa or Baylor. The Ducks played in front of a home crowd yesterday at Moda Center. It, it was close throughout. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> the star guard. I'm losing my voice. <laughs> we've 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 uh, grown as a team from that first year I was here, and, and now our fan support's grown. Um, the fact that so many people came down to watch us and cheer us on, and really believed in us throughout this whole time, is uh, speaks volume. Congratulations. Okay, the Baylor Iowa game is tonight at four. You can watch it on ESPN two. Okay, somebody's gonna have to get me some water super quick. Well, the student sports reporters who cover the team are also celebrating. Late last night, they secured enough donations to travel to Florida for the game. How cool is that? Nina Melhoff talked with one of them today, and she's joining us now. Nina, how exciting. It is, Brenda. They are independent student journalists at the U of O's Daily Emerald newspaper, so that means they don't get university money to cover costs. So they posted their goal of $1,500 on the GoFundMe site this weekend, and by last night, they reached their goal and beyond. Three Emerald reporters will now leave on Wednesday for Florida to cover the fans, the players and the game from the stands and the locker room. They had been up here in Portland all weekend for the Elite Eight game. The Emerald sends two reporters to every game at home and some of the away games as well. But this real world experience is vital. It teaches you how to cover a big event because that's one of the toughest things I think in sports journalism is being able to cover something that's just so massive. And this is about as big as it gets, a final four. Then emailing professors and saying, hey, um, not going to be there on the first day of class. Sorry. They've, they've been pretty accepting of that, though. They're supportive of the cause. 
And how crazy is it now that the team is back and they're trying to go to class on this Monday and uh, the rest of the days of the week before they head to Florida. Pretty hard to think about your homework when you're thinking about the final <laughs> four. It's in Tampa. Orlando Sanchez is headed there with the team. We'll have live reports from the final four starting on Thursday. Brenda. All right, I like it, and I'm going to cheers that with my uh, water in a wine glass, thanks to uh, our crew back here. Well, let's talk Trailblazers for a second now. Playoff tickets just went on sale at noon. So four minutes ago, Portland heading to the playoffs for the sixth year in a row. The Blazers still have six games to go in the regular season, so we don't know their first round opponent or whether they'll have home court advantage. You can get tickets if you go to trailblazers.com. Okay, it is 12.04 and the clouds have moved in on our Monday. Boy, it sure was a sunny weekend though. That is a live look at the moment from our Rose City Sky Cam. And Chris, some places already seeing rain. Yeah, you know, actually it's been raining for much of the morning across parts of the Oregon coast. This is a live look from Pacific City. We've got some raindrops on the camera lens there. It's been raining since early this morning in Newport. Let me show you the radar right now. Uh, the rain has worked its way as far north as Salem, but it's had a tough time getting any farther north. I've seen some sprinkles on some of the ODOT cameras uh, down in the Woodburn area, but that's about it. So the dry air is still kind of hanging out over Portland and keeping us dry for now, but I do think eventually the rain wins out. That might take a little while longer though. So uh, in the meantime, again, the wet weather in Salem and just south of the McMinnville area, Polk County, Yamhill County getting wet. This is a look at future cast and through two o'clock, the lion's share of the moisture staying south of the Portland metro area. So again, this is through early afternoon, but by later on in the day and certainly by, uh, let's say, the tail end of the evening commute, the rain begins to fill back in. And I think by the time things are said and done, we will have rain on the ground here, but maybe not until the tail end of the uh, the afternoon commute. So Brenda, that's a little change from what we were thinking this morning. We've got the shower chance at six, but I think it's going to be six and beyond as you get into like, you know, North Portland, Vancouver and Kelso Longview, you may not see rain today until much later this evening. And that's why temperatures up there are already a little bit warmer than they are, say, down in Salem. So a little bit of everything uh, going on in our in our Monday forecast. I've got to look ahead to the next seven days, which do look pretty wet. That's coming up in just a few minutes, Brenda. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm. A man has serious injuries after he fell about 100 feet from a cliff near Rainier. He landed next to the Columbia River. This happened around 7 last night. Columbia River Fire and Rescue says firefighters had to hike about a mile to reach the man. They loaded him onto a boat, then transferred him to a hospital here in Portland. We haven't heard yet what caused that man to fall. An 18-year-old accused of driving drunk in a deadly crash will be arraigned later today. Washington County Sheriff's deputies say Roger Baird was drunk and high when he hit a pickup truck on Highway 99 near Sherwood. The passenger in the truck died. Deputies say Baird's license is suspended because of a hit and run two months ago. Officials say he pleaded guilty to the charges in that case and is currently on probation. A KGW viewer shared this video of a SWAT standoff in Beaverton. Police say they arrested a man at this apartment complex on Shendell Avenue last night. The standoff lasted almost all day Sunday and neighbors had to evacuate. Police eventually broke out the windows of the apartment and the man came out. Arturo Garcia is now in the Washington County Jail. He had a warrant out for him in connection with a domestic violence charge. A shooting in Springfield killed one person and injured two officers. We don't know exactly what led up to that shooting, but it happened just before 9 o'clock last night during a police chase. Authorities say the two officers are in the hospital, but they should be okay. The name of the person killed hasn't been released. Well, it's the start of spring break for families in Vancouver, and today several airlines dealt with a computer glitch. Southwest, American, and Delta had to ground plans for a short time while they fixed the problem. An FAA computer system that processes flight plans went down. Now, we didn't have any issues at PDX, but we did talk to families ready for spring break. One of them is heading to the nation's capital. Yeah, we're gonna go to the Mon Monument, we're gonna go to Arlington, we're gonna check out the Smithsonian, the Air and Space Museum, the White House, all of that. FBI we're going to yeah. as well. Yeah, sounds fun. By the way, all airlines say they are now back up and running normally. 
The report on the Ethiopian Airlines plane crash won't come out today as expected. The country's transport minister made that announcement. It's been three weeks since the 737 MAX 8 went down, killing 189 people. The report is looking into any similarities between that crash on March 10th and the deadly Lion Air crash last October. Boeing will review the report after it's released, possibly this week. All MAX planes are grounded, and the longer that continues, the more likely your summer travel plans could be affected. The airlines are moving around the flights due to this ripple effect of having to ground so many planes due to the 737 MAX, which means that there might not be as many seats available on the flights that you would typically want to take to certain destinations. The FAA is waiting to review the final software upgrade that Boeing has been working on. Well, Salem is the latest city to outlaw single-use plastic bags. That ban went into effect today. So if you're a shopper, you'll need to bring your own reusable bags or buy a paper one for five cents at checkout. We talked with a Salem City Councilor who sponsored this measure. And it starts at the local level, which is what uh, Salem was doing. So banning the bags, the plastic bags, single-use plastic bags, will have a great effect on, on the environment. Low-income customers can get free bags if they show their Oregon Trail card. The Oregon legislature is also considering a statewide ban.